Have you ever wondered why companies such as Airbnb are not the most viable option for renting space in Korea? Perhaps you've never heard of the term pension. In today's episode of Living in Korea, I'll take you around one such pension so you can have a look and then get a better understanding of why Airbnb is struggling to make business here in Korea. The private J pension, which is just located here behind me, is located just outside of the city of Gyeongju. Gyeongju city is the ancient capital city of South Korea and uh, it's maintained in a pristine condition. Uh, the local government or the Korean government uh, prohibits um, excessive development in the city and places a limit on how, on the size of particular buildings that can be built and developed inside the city limits. There aren't too many large buildings. Um, this particular pension has only three small private buildings. Each one of these buildings is equipped with an inside jacuzzi and an outdoor pool. This is the size of it. It's not very big, but it's good enough to do many rounds. It'll do. Kids will love it. There's a balcony entrance right here with a large view window which faces a mountain right here. The main door through which I will take you now. Are we? Come on, follow me. Ooh, dark. Mm, this is the kitchen area, the TV area, I guess. Look at these funky lights. Huh. They're tiny lights inside a light bulb. And here's the front window for which you can see the swimming pool. And you've got a little bit of a forest view. It's not an actual forest but it gives you the feel of it. It's very quiet, it's tucked away from the city hustle and bustle. Uh, behind this door is the jacuzzi. As you can see, it's large enough. There are two taps, hot and cold water. There's also a shower here. The kitchen is equipped with all kinds of stuff. Anything you need is inside the kitchen. Rice cooker, that's our thermos. Uh, all these bowls. The place comes equipped with, with a refrigerator and a freezer, which is empty. We're staying here for one night. Everything's here. Underneath the sink you can find things like dishes and pots, some spices, some glasses, and a microwave, which is very important. What's really, really cool is this grill. I've never seen anything like it. This is probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen. If you want to make bacon or hash browns or toast anything else in the morning, this is the place to go. Man, I wish we had brought some bacon. This would be perfect for bacon and hash brown tonight. Fortunately, we didn't bring anything of that sort. Probably would be better to have it set up on the table rather than on the floor. But since we're not using it, it's just for display. For the moment. Mm, bacon. Let's go upstairs. Hello! Whoa! The pooper! So the upstairs room is equipped with uh, two large, I guess, king-size beds, meaning that, you know, four adult-sized people could rest here. There's a TV right there for your enjoyment, and you got a nice big view outside. Of course, this pension is not located near anything as picturesque as an ocean could be, or, I don't know, perhaps a temple, or forest, a proper forest, but it is quiet, it is tucked away from any city, any pollution, um, and it gives you a feel of restfulness, and it gives you a chance to escape from the hustle and bustle of a city. But it is still within reasonable reach of Gyeongju, and people come here every day, I don't even know how many visitors Gyeongju city gets on a regular basis, but there's plenty. Prices for Airbnb, I think, are varied. They range from anywhere of $25, I heard somebody stay in Tokyo, 
in the center of Tokyo in, a, in an apartment place for $25 a night, which seemed ridiculously cheap for, for a place located in the center of Tokyo. Nonetheless, that's how much he paid. Uh, I'm walking here with my friend Taiwan. We're, we're just going out for a little walk around the neighborhood. So this pension charges, um, I think we're paying, what are we paying here? 300 something Yeah. Is that right? Awesome. Yeah. So it's about uh, roughly $300 plus or minus 300 million won for the night. So if two mouth families come, we can split that. And you have the entire house to yourself. Uh, the apartment in Tokyo and the apartment in downtown Vancouver. Uh, you're located inside a city, $200 per night for an apartment. Here you're basically renting an entire house for 300. It probably explains or kind of puts into perspective the idea of Airbnb having a hard time penetrating the market here. And Gyeongju is a very good location for it. There's a lot of land because like I said, it's not being developed as much as other cities uh, due to the ban that government places on the development here. And so the nature is pretty pristine. You get clean air and quiet environment. I used to come here when my daughter was born, when she was little. Oh yeah, that pension, I forgot to mention, that pension belongs to my parents-in-law. So if you're ever interested in coming down, buzz me up, I'll set you up with a discount. <laughs> this looks like a new house. Here's a ramshackled, old, decrepitated piece of architecture. This one looks like someone was building and then kind of gave up. Yeah. Look at this kid, he's wearing nothing. He's got a shirt on. And we're bundled up in Gustav jackets. Don, <laughs> <laughs> have you ever thought about starting a business? What kind of business? Any business. I'm just saying, what kind of? Yeah. Yeah. one runs a hog one as well. It's a math hog one. Uh, god of math. God of math. He's <laughs> the god of math in our neighborhood. Look at this view. It's gorgeous. This is what? Tebek Samme? Yeah, Tebek so Mountain? Yeah, yeah, yeah. End of Tebek Mountain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you notice, there is no car sounds here. You can hear a dog, but not much so traffic. It's very difficult, from my experience, living in Korea, it's very difficult to get away from the, the, the constant noise of, of traffic here. Right. Because it's a very small country, and there are roads everywhere and now over the past few years there's even more development and, and a lot more highways have been built and so it's very difficult to get to a place where you don't hear anything and outside of this noisemaker here there's no traffic right you can't hear anything yeah usually wherever you go in korea there is always this sound kind of like a white noise in the background coming from the highways and, and just car traffic. But it's pretty quiet here, it's nice. So for those lucky enough to be living up north and closer to the uh, DMZ in Gangwon, though, um, <clears throat> those who are lucky enough to live there, I'm sure you experience the deafening silence of, you know, the absence of noise. But when you live closer to like cities like Ulsan or Busan, uh, it's a lot more difficult to find a place that's quiet and away from traffic. This is an old barn. Seems like somebody just sat in this chair, stood up, undressed, and left. Oh, there is an old tractor right there. Look at this. That is brilliant. An old rusted tractor. Yesterday I read an article um, about Airbnb and Uber uh, being once again pushed out of Korea. So a couple of weeks ago I talked about an article or an incident that took place in, in Seoul. A taxi driver who set himself on fire in front of the National Assembly and he did that in protest of uh, uh, Uber coming to Korea. Uh, I guess in fear of you know uh, Uber taking over a lot of the market. Um, it also mentioned a bunch of other things, um, particularly uh, mentioning the uh, Chebol companies, the big ones, the Samsung and Hyundai, who are basically 
running a lot of the, um, the Korean economy and they, they form the body of the big decision makers on smaller startups like Uber and uh, Airbnb coming into Korea because you know those are the companies that hold the majority of the market so having competition is probably bad for them. So <laughs> the article mentioned, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So um, I guess they feel the competitiveness of the of these companies could be a threat to them, and I guess uh, to to a large extent the Korean government is supportive of that idea because these companies have a finger on the trigger and they kind of decide uh, on what's happening and whether company other companies do come in or not and uh, they're in control of what's happening to the economy uh, Samsung has inv invested into uh, there was a startup company a Korean startup company I forget the name which was a car sharing company and Samsung invested um, I think five million dollars into that company and six months later they sold their initial investment um, as a result of uh, whatever pressures were coming from the government and from the populace, I guess, and Samsung withdrew and invested into a Singaporean-based, uh, what is it, Grab, I think, company. There's a lot of stuff that the Chebol are doing here that is obviously good for themselves because they want to make profits. Uh, you know, what happens to Korean economy, I think, is just a side uh, issue and it's not really in their best interest to, to propel the Korean economy to its good as long as they're making money, they're happy. If Koreans are making money, that's fine, that's great, but that's not the main um, main concern for these companies. Samsung, Hyundai, LG, the table is like a very, very big yeah. tree. Right. So they are so big, so small, small companies, uh, companies and small plants can't can't grow. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's big, big problem. They, these companies were great in the 70s when Korea needed mm -hmm. economic boost, mm -hmm. but right now they're kind of putting a damper mm -hmm. on the small companies that can't grow. Right. Yeah. yeah. So while they were a solution at one point, I think now they're a problem, <laughs> almost, in some ways. <laughs> really big problem. So that'll conclude today's episode of uh, Living Korea. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Come back for more. If you're interested in visiting the J Pension, drop me a line, I'll hook you up with a discount, like I said. Until then, Crypto Father out.